Hey everybody, it's Brandon with FastDataScience.ai and you caught me in the middle of just doing a little studying on statistics. While I was doing that, I got to thinking about complex issues. Uh, and one of the things that I run into um, quite often whenever I'm talking about what my team does uh, or what my skill set is and how it applies to business is inevitably somebody asks me, well, what exactly is artificial intelligence? Uh, and it's really important to know how to answer that question for the right audience because different people have different degrees of technical understanding. And if you explain it to people who don't have a very high degree of technical understanding in a way that's just simply too esoteric or too complicated, it'll turn them off immediately and it'll also shut a lot of doors. It'll remove opportunities that you may have had as a person who does have the technical know-how to do some data science and to bring it into the business or to bring it into a particular problem space, use it to solve that problem. You might lose the opportunity to be able to demonstrate uh, that, that there is a data science solution or an artificial intelligence solution. So what I want to do in this particular video is talk a little bit more deeply about how I approach simplifying the answer to this question and the reason I do it this way is because I feel as though it has um, a way of resonating with folks who are not as technical as I may be or other more proper data scientists or even data analysts may be. So the goal here is to really discuss and demonstrate how I personally help others understand what exactly artificial intelligence is. And really what that means is it all starts with simplifying the problem for non-technical folks um, and really trying to explain to them in a way that demonstrates that artificial intelligence is something that's achievable. It's achievable not just by the large you know, mega tech companies that are out there, but it's achievable even by the small uh, individual companies or, or you know, entrepreneurs who have startups or whatever it may be. Um, there are opportunities to create artificially intelligent solutions and embed them into those businesses so that they actually do have some benefit for their customers, their clients, uh, or the product or service that they're trying to sell. So we'll look at my simplification of the problem, particularly focused around business leaders, helping them understand what artificial intelligence is, understanding the platforms and, and, and data that go into realizing that solution, understanding where data science plugs in to those platforms so that we can call those platforms now something that are more artificially intelligent. And then we'll talk really quickly about what the implications are for both developers, and I'm talking about not just software developers, but also data science developers. Uh, and then we'll look at a few of the really important implications for business leaders. Okay, so when you ask people this question, what is artificial intelligence, particularly if they're not a technical audience, invariably they're going to be influenced by all of the popular media depictions of what artificial intelligence is to humanity and science fiction. And invariably what happens is people conjure up images of usually robots uh, that have a way of um, imitating or representing human capabilities, human emotions even in some cases, or in a lot of cases when it comes to movies. Um, but the idea is that these things are beings, they are agentic, they have uh, the ability to do human-like things, um, but they are encased in uh, non-biological material, right? Um, and I think that this depiction um, feels complex because in this regard it, it is complex but this is not really what artificial intelligence is from a day-to-day -day perspective in a business. Essentially artificial intelligence is really just the ability of software applications to be able to make some decisions that are decisions that are not based on black and white rules, but rather decisions that are based on probabilities, right? So thinking probabilistically, dealing with the fact that our decision is made with incomplete data, so we're not 100% sure, it's uncertain, right? So artificial intelligence is the ability to deal with that uncertainty in a way that a human typically would deal with that uncertainty. 
Uh, and so the way that I define artificial intelligence that I believe is particularly useful for business stakeholders to be able to get on board with understanding and identifying their own possible use cases is to describe it like this. Artificial intelligence is merely the bringing together of two different disciplines, software and data science or machine learning. And that's it. All we're doing in artificial intelligence is bringing together software and machine learning data science models so that the software can leverage the machine learning model's ability to deal with uncertainty so that the software can then use the decision made by the model in order to do other things that make the software feel intelligent. And that's really all artificial intelligence is. And we get more sophisticated in the implementation of these two practices, but at its core, this is essentially what is happening. So in order to understand how and where artificial intelligence, or I should say data science and machine learning, can come into a software application in order to create an application that we could call artificially intelligent, we take a look here at a simple architecture of a typical web application. So in the little sort of curved, um, you know, sort of squarish, rectangularish box over here, I have a web application. And in that web application, go away, I wasn't ready for you yet, model. Uh, in that web application, maybe you've got a user that comes into the web app and they do something. Right? And that web application may call some other service via an API so that it can include some additional information or do something else for its user. In addition, that web application may also read or write data to a, another database in its uh, ecosystem or in its technical architecture to be able to respond so that if a user enters their name, it can save their name, maybe do a lookup. Uh, back here in the master database to pull some additional information on that person and bring it up and say, hi, Johnny, or hi, Jennifer. Uh, and, and then maybe also there is an opportunity to um, you know, pull that data directly from the master database in some cases. But the idea here is, is that we have a very basic architecture of a front-end web application that's supporting some user need. Now, there are lots of different places that we can take our data science and build it into this architecture to create a web application in this case or applications, software applications more generally, that are truly or can be dubbed as artificially intelligent. So one area or opportunity to embed data science is in the process of bringing new data into that master database. And so you can't see my fingers down here, but I'm conjuring up this model. This, so here is just simply data science code and perhaps a, a saved model that's been trained on other data that enters into this ETL process, which is just a process for loading data into a master database. And so that model is uh, maybe transforming that data in an intelligent way. For example, maybe that data that's coming in is unstructured text data. And so we have data science models that are model that are scoring that unstructured text data for maybe topics or entities. And then it's pushing those entities as structures into a master database. Now that web application can have access to the outputs of that data science. Other places that we may see opportunities, we can actually have a model that deals with the data that is being written out by the application, so more real time. So now we're starting to get into a more real time interaction where if the web data writes something to this intermediary database, that model could use that write as an event to then score that data in a way that allows us to respond intelligently. So maybe that model can take information in that's being written from that web application because a user is maybe typing in a free text request, like a search. They're saying, well, I want you to find for me uh, my last bill that was related to uh, the purchase of some product. And maybe we have a model that goes in and helps to interpret that particular freeform text request so that it can return a response that allows that individual to identify the answer to their request. And then another place that we may also see 
uh, a model or data science entering into the software sort of development life cycle to create artificial intelligence uh, is maybe models are served as APIs themselves. And again, it's just another way of sort of dealing with uh, what I was describing with this read write database where there's data coming out of the web application and that data is then being transformed on the fly by an existing model in order to respond in a way that appears intelligent. Okay, so what are the implications of this simple definition for developers in, that includes both software developers and data scientists? So for software developers, applications can be made smarter with these simple AI integrations. Integrations can exist as part of data feeds in ETL or other data feeds. Or integrations can be direct as part of data derived from the application. For data science, so it opens up a whole new realm of possible user experiences for those software designers. For data scientists, we recognize that our solutions can be deployed via multiple mechanisms so as to create artificial intelligence in the products that our businesses are selling or the services that our businesses are offering. Those can be deployed directly to databases. That should be one word. Solutions can be deployed as APIs so that they're available for more real-time model scoring. And then those points of integration really just depend on what the needs are from both a response time and a compute resource uh, sort of consideration um, for that particular use case, right? For whatever you're trying to improve in that user experience on that application. Implications for business leaders, I think, are even more far reaching when they look at the problem in this way. So there is a clear need to collaborate between application developing teams or software development teams and data science teams. It's a must for, for companies to continue to digitize in a way that takes advantage of the artificial intelligence uh, hype cycle. Let's call it that. Developing flexible infrastructure that allows applications to access AI artifacts, models, whatever they may be, data as an output of models, uh, requires that we have some of those deployments available to those software development teams. So there needs to be some kind of an API strategy or some kind of a data integration strategy so that you have these different opportunities to integrate those code bases together. Often, using data derived from application, user actions will also create new opportunities for smarter functionality. So it's not just the case that our solutions should integrate with old data. Our solutions can also integrate with data that's happening on the fly from users that are experiencing those interactions through the application, through the user interface that that creates new opportunities to further improve the intelligence and experience and bring even more value and function to those individuals. So hopefully this definition and way of looking at artificial intelligence has inspired you a little bit to kind of simplify it in your mind. Think about what really artificial intelligence is as it, at its essence. But, and also to be able to open up the world of possible use cases for how you can impact and your business or your, your um, whatever it may be you're in your particular role uh, as a leader. What are the, the realm of possible use cases? Hopefully this opens up those horizons and you start to kind of understand um, what, that there are a lot more opportunities than maybe we thought before um, whenever we, we sort of are presented with this idea or initiative of you need to build artificial intelligence. So with that, I thank you for uh, tuning in and listening to uh, my rather lengthy explanation of a very simple idea on how we define artificial intelligence and make it operational in business contexts. Uh, look forward to more. Please comment. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback. I'm always open to additional feedback. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about the data science lifecycle and what pieces need to go into creating 
go back to it. These little model bubbles, please feel free to also check out my book, which gives you an overview of the full life cycle of a data science project uh, from data collection all the way through to production and deployment. Uh, and so it gives a good overview in a particular use case for a business. Uh, thanks again for tuning in, and I will be uh, doing more of these. So talk soon. Bye, everybody.